Having the right tools and utilities can make a difference in your day. One, it can help you get things done quicker. Two, it helps you avoid frustration. And three, it can help you be a bit more productive. In this video, I want to share some of the top Windows apps that I use as a software engineer and on the personal use day to day. The best thing is that they're all free. So let's uh, roll the tape. I don't know why I keep doing this with my hands. So first up is if you've used the Mac or experienced Mac, you'll see that in Finder, there is a handy built-in quick preview when you hit the spacebar button. On Windows out of the box, you're a bit out of luck, but with this tool called Quick Look, you can preview file contents at the touch of the spacebar. It works with PDFs, markdown files, images, and even zip files. Really handy when you want to take a quick peek at a file for just a moment before opening it. Next is a tool that I think is the missing photo image editor from Windows, and that's paint.net. It's free and really useful when you need to make a few quick modifications with images and any screenshots you need to modify. There are a few alternatives here as well that I think it's worth mentioning, and that's Photopea. It's basically Adobe Photoshop, but on the web. So it's not specifically for Windows, no need to install anything. The other app worth mentioning here as well is similar to Photoshop is GIMP. All of these I find really useful, maybe editing either a YouTube thumbnail or just adding some text overlay on an image without too much hassle. Now with so many logins to various accounts, it's good to have a password manager. For that, I use Bitwarden. I've used LastPass and OnePassword in the past. Both are great choices. But my personal choice is Bitwarden. Now the user interface is not as nice as OnePassword, but in terms of features and mainly price, I have to give it to Bitwarden. It's available on Mac as well as Windows, has a very generous free plan where you can store passwords and have multiple devices synced. They also offer a paid plan, which in my view is very affordable, and that's currently $10 a year. That's a year, which is just 80 cents a month. It also comes with Chrome and Firefox extensions that allow you to auto-fill and save passwords. And for those hardcore geeks out there, Bitwarden is open source and you can even self-host if you're a little paranoid or want more control of your data. Next up is Microsoft Power Toys. These are a set of utilities that give Windows 10 that extra tools that are missing. There are various utilities once installed, such as Color Picker, Fancy Zones, Image Resizer, and a few more. The two I want to talk about are Fancy Zones and Power Toys Run. Now you may know that you can use the split screen feature in Windows 10 by pressing the Windows and left arrow right key. With Fancy Zones, you can set existing set of zones, then you can hold the shift key and start to drag. This is handy if you want to configure zones and layouts depending on what you're working on. And of course, if you have a large monitor, you have more space to play around with. With Power Toys Run, it's sort of a quick application launcher. You can trigger it with Alt Space, you can start typing a few characters and it'll auto-complete to suggest what to launch. You can also use it as a calculator, which is pretty neat. It can be configured to search for files as well, and I think it's really neat when you want to launch an application quickly without having to use the start menu. Next is 7-Zip. When I need to compress and send files over via email or Slack, 7-Zip is my go-to tool. It's lightweight, has a few more configuration options than the standard Windows 10 compression tool, and it doesn't really get in the way of anything. It has a built-in Windows Explorer context menu, so it's easy to access. It offers password protection and it offers a few other compression formats. If you have a very large file and you need to split them into different zip files, 7-Zip offers you to split them into different specific chunks. And finally, it's a text editor. Whether you're a developer or not, or thinking about becoming one, having a no-nonsense text editor is essential. My go-to editor is VS Code. It has plenty of extensions that support various programming languages, as well as handy utility tools such as spell checker and word count. Not only do I use it for development, but it's really useful for viewing and editing the odd text file, CSV file, right down to modifying configuration files. I find VS Code really responsive, lightweight, I even use it to take odd notes and a quick to-do list after a meeting, 
rather than firing up Word or Google Docs. I also use it as a markdown editor and it has an inbuilt markdown previewer. Oh, and if you get bored of the look and feel, there are plenty of color themes to choose from to give it a fresh new look. Some other alternative editors out there which are just as good and worth mentioning are Sublime Text, Atom and Notepad++. Again, all free, so feel free to check those out. All right, so that wraps it up for another video. Hope you found it useful and feel free to let me know in the comments below if you have any or know of any tools you want to share. And I'll catch you next time around.